Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. Richard Versal was portraying the minor role of a law clerk named Vitek in a performance at the prestigious Metropolitan Opera in New York City. He was age 63 and had suffered absolutely no adverse health problems. In the opera, there is a beautiful and mysterious woman who wants to live forever. Her father, a chemist magician, concocts a powerful elixir which allows her to live more than 300 years. But for Sal, portraying the law clerk, sings a line which goes, You can only live so long. Little did anyone who attended the opera that night realize that those words, You can only live so long, would be the last sentence ever to come from the lips of this man whose singing had touched the hearts of thousands and thousands in his career. No sooner had he sung the line when his heart failed. Then he fell, landing motionless on his back, his arms outstretched. Realizing that something was wrong, the stage manager immediately dropped the curtain, and the performance was canceled. Then only the third time for this to have happened in the history of the Met once a performance had begun. Anthony George, the singer's manager, was sitting in the orchestra seat only a few feet away when he died. George told the press that as far as he knew, he had suffered no health problems whatsoever. Long ago, the writer of Hebrews wrote, Man is destined to die once, and after that to face judgment. Of one thing you can be sure. When it comes to the length of our lives, we may fantasize about living for 300 years. But the fact remains, there is an established number of years for every person to live, and after that, we face death. Now, in life, there are many inequalities. Some have the money to have the finest seats in the opera. Some have only enough to sit in the balcony far away from the action, and some can't even afford the least expensive seat in the house. However, when making an entrance and an exit to the stage of life, everyone is perfectly equal. Facing death, however, is neither scary nor foreboding when you have the concrete assurance that death only opens the door to life eternal. That's the difference that Jesus Christ made in our world. He stood before an open grave and said candidly, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. Jesus Christ alone faced death, then came back to talk about it. And it is this fact that death could not hold him, which makes what he said credible and so very important. He told his disciples he was going to prepare a place for them, and that he would return and receive them to himself, so where he was, they could be also. An eternal home in the heavens is what Jesus was talking about. It is real, as real, however, as anything on earth friend of mine called to give me the rather shocking news that leukemia was gradually taking his life, and the doctors did not expect him to live more than a few days. Even though he was in his mid-80s, his voice was strong and firm. I've never known a more godly man who, in spite of the sadness in saying farewell to friends and family, bore a tinge of excitement in his voice. He knew where he was going, And he knew the way to heaven was through him who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. A final question. If what happened to Richard Versal should happen to you, would you be ready? You can only live so long, sing Richard Versal. You know, friend, he was right. You've just heard Dr. Harold Sala with Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. If you would like to listen to the program again, download a copy, subscribe to our e-commentary, or view other resources, visit guidelines.org. We would like to hear from you, too. You can email us at info at guidelines.org. That's info at guidelines.org. Thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again for the next edition of Guidelines. Guidelines.